I'm Stuart Jackson, Portfolio Manager at Montgomery Investment Management. Welcome to this week's video insight. This week, I thought I would discuss discounted cash flow valuations and the most common mistake made in estimating the value of a company using this valuation methodology. A common complaint made about discounted cash flow valuations is that a small change made to assumptions has a, has a very large impact on the end result. One of the main reasons why analysts perceive this to be the case is that most models do not properly fund growth. An all too common assumption made in modelling and a personal bugbear of mine is to set capex equal to depreciation in forecast periods. This essentially implies that the company can grow its earnings while holding its fixed assets flat into perpetuity, as the level of capex merely offsets the reduction in fixed assets expense through the income statement in the form of depreciation. One of the reasons this happens is when analysts ask a company's management what the required level of capex is to maintain the operations, management's definition of what this means is very different to an analyst's. Management generally thinks about maintenance capex in terms of the amount needed to keep the business operating in the same way as it does at present. But the question the analyst is really asking is what is the level of capex required to maintain the current level of earnings? These concepts are very different due to the impact of ongoing productivity improvements generated by any industry. If capex is held at levels that keep the business operating the same way, it will fall behind the competition over time and earnings will fall. Hence, every business requires a degree of reinvestment to improve its efficiency in order to maintain its competitiveness. In reality, there are very few companies, if any, that can hold capex in line with depreciation in the long term. Such an assumption implies an infinite return on incremental capital invested by the company. This implied assumption then amplifies the impact of any other assumption changes when determining the valuation. If we were to make the same assumption when calculating a PE multiple for a company with a 5% earnings growth into perpetuity and a cost of equity of 10%, then we would value that company at 20 times next year's earnings. By contrast, if we then assume that it could only reinvest its capital in a marginal return on equity of 20%, which would still be a pretty good result, the PE uh, multiple falls uh, to around 16 times, which reduces the valuation by about 20%. So it's not surprising a materially unstated CapEx assumption in a discounted cash flow valuation produces greater variances in outcomes when other variables are changed. One of the benefits of using a discounted cash flow valuation is the ability to look at an underlying assumptions that deliver the valuation in isolation, rather than having them all bundled up in a single multiple. This provides insight into the risks embedded in the valuation outcome. One of the key assumptions is the implied marginal return on capital. But in controlling for the return on invest, uh, incremental capital invested, the sensitivity of the valuation to changes in forecast earnings growth rates is offset by a reduction in capex forecasts. This makes intuitive sense given the company's growth rate changes, the amount of capital it, needed to invest, it needs to reinvest to support that growth should also change. If this is not done, the change in valuation from a lower, lower earnings growth assumption is amplified by an implied reduction in the assumed rate of return generated on incremental capital invested by the company. The return generated by a company on incremental capital invested is critical in determining the value of a company and is also an important differentiator between high and low quality companies. Therefore, an explicit analysis of understanding of this component of the valuation is a fundamental part of understanding the investment merits and risks associated with the stock. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week. In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter.